Hello and welcome to the 12 days of Christmas, day 8. And I'm actually recording this on Christmas Day because once I go back to work on the 27th, I will have less and less time available to record since I'll be working all day. So I want to record some stuff ahead as much as I can. And I thought this video would be a great one to do. So I'm going to go over my Goodreads 2023 reading challenge and the books that I read. And I'm going to go ahead and do a screen recording. That way I can put that up on the screen and we can go through this together. <clears throat> so. I am going to start back at the very beginning with the very first book that I did of 2023, which was Sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. And this book, you can see that I rated it four stars. It was pretty good. And honestly, I think if I were going back, I might drop it to three. I think as the year has gone past, I've become a little bit more particular about how I'm reading my books. But this was a really good book. It wasn't historical fiction, and it was a book about during the Depression times when families were poor and sometimes would have to actually give their children up for adoption because they just couldn't afford to clothe or feed them, and it was either give them up for adoption or they might starve to death. Um, and so this talked about <clears throat> a story of two children that were taken and basically bought, uh, somebody came along and bought these children to then adopt out and um, they went and tried to locate these children. Um, so that's kind of the gist of it. I don't want to spend too much time since there are 46 books on this list and I don't want this to be really long. So <clears throat> that book was a good one. Next up, An Afro-Indigenous History of the United States. And this one was part of my learning um, about just the history of different groups that have been oppressed throughout history in the United States, and this one covered both African Americans and Native Americans. And then this one was a very short, it's basically a novella or a short novel, and it was The Pearl by John Steinbeck. And since it does not take long at all to read, I would definitely recommend giving this one a try if you like John Steinbeck um, of Mice and Men and The Grapes of Wrath are his two obviously most common ones, but this one's a very, very quick read. <clears throat> Next up was Trust by Hernan Diaz. This is another one I think I would drop at a star because, actually I think I can just do that while I'm, anyway, um, I this one, I'm having a hard time now actually remembering what it was even about. I remember for about the first half of the book, I struggled to get into it and it wasn't until later that I really started to like it. And I, I genuinely couldn't tell you a single thing about what this book was about because I don't remember. So if that tells you anything, I know it was a very popular book and it was recommended. I think it might have even been a recommendation from the New York Times, but it just wasn't, wasn't it for me. Next up, Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekulak. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Um, this book is another one that, let me see what the plot says. If I, it'll remind me of what this was. Hmm. I kind of vaguely remember this now. I do remember liking the book, but I don't really remember what it was about. And I think that is a huge problem for readers is, and especially when you read so many books, sometimes reading retention, as soon as you finish the book, you lose it all. Next up, Lost Roses by Martha Hall Kelly, and you can see there that it is the Lilac Girls series number two, and let's see what this one was. Okay, yeah, this was, this was a World War II historical fiction, that's right, um, and I do remember liking this book as well. Um, this book was one of my favorites of the year, actually. Uh, the Rural Diaries by Hilary Burton Morgan. And I gave this one five stars and I would not change that rating at all. In fact, if I come across this in like a used bookstore or at one of the library book sales, I will most definitely purchase it. I really, really love this book and I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Whether you were a One Tree Hill fan or a Hilary Burton fan or a Jeffrey Dean Morgan fan, does not matter, great book. Um, Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. I believe I read two of his books this year. Which one was this one? 
Okay, yeah, this was, the, so the semi-autobiographical, so this one was a lot about, gosh darn it, of course I get all these notifications when I'm trying to record a screen share. Um, so this one was a lot about his childhood and his upbringing in deeply religious um, Christian South, and with a pastor for a father who was very harsh and judgmental, and of course James Baldwin was gay, and so it was, it was a great story. Of course, James Baldwin is just a fantastic author. Um, Giovanni's Room was his first book that I ever read, and that's another one that I will most definitely pick up from my bookshelf if I come across it. I do have it in digital version, but I do not have it in um, hard copy. This book probably is my absolute number one favorite book of 2023. I would rate it six stars, ten stars, anything you could give it. Um, and if you've ever read The Kite Runner, I know that one is popular even in um, high school English classrooms and stuff, but it's by Khaled Hasseni. And I did also read The Kite Runner this year, and it was a very good book too, but for me, A Thousand Splendid Sons was just chef's kiss. It, And I think a lot of the reason why I like this one more than The Kite Runner is just because of the fact that the main characters are female, and it gives you a very, it's disturbing, but a very important inside view of the lives, the experiences of the lives of women living in an occupied Afghanistan. So fantastic book. Highly, highly recommend this one. If you get a chance to read it, please do. And then The Tobacco Wives. Um, this one I vaguely do remember just because it is a little bit of an, an historical fiction as well, and it goes back and covers the time when there was a big tobacco boom in the United States. And then next up is The Kite Runner, which I also had just mentioned, and it was another fantastic book. I did like A Thousand Splendid Sons better, just for reasons that I've just stated, but this was also a fantastic read. So if you get a chance to read anything by Khaled Hosseini, believe that's the correct pronunciation, please read it. I know he's got a third book too, and I can't remember if I read it or just started it. And it's not as good as the first two, but fantastic, fantastic author. Okay, yeah, The Fire Next Time, another James Baldwin. Again, anything James Baldwin, please read it. He was such an important voice of the civil rights movement. Um, I would say he's probably my favorite male black author. Now, I do have two female black authors that are in my top five. So I have a top five books that I have on my dresser in my room, and maybe I'll show you that as well in one of these videos. But two of them, one is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, and then the other one is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Amazing books. <clears throat> Under the Skin. So this is another one that for me was... Um, oppression research, um, specifically the black experience. I did not rate this book because I don't feel like I have the right to rate it. And what I mean by that is this is personal accounts. This is accounts of many, many people of whom I have no personal knowledge, of whose experience I have no experience with. I can't relate to it because I've not gone through it. Um, and I don't feel that I have the justification to even give the book a rating. Um, it was very, very good, very insightful, very informative. It's another one that I would definitely recommend that everyone read. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is another one I don't know why I rated it for. I definitely have changed my rating system. I think it was one of those that I saw online and it was highly acclaimed and I was curious and so I put a hold on it and checked it out and read it but just not really into the whole like romance genre. I don't know. I read them here and there. Um, it's just not really my cup of tea. I mean, sometimes they're good if you're in the mood for it, but I just really am stuck on historical fiction. I love them so much. I also love memoirs and nonfiction. And um, if I do read fiction, I really do love for there to be kind of a deep meaning behind it. And maybe it's because I've spent so many years as a very independent single woman, but I think that there are so many more important things in life than romance and falling in love. 
Um, that's definitely important. Don't get me wrong. Having a great life partner is everything if you can find the right one. Um, there are so many more just goals and self-fulfilling things that we can strive for and accomplish in life beyond romance and falling in love. And so I really appreciate fiction books that explore some sort of a main idea outside of romance. Like there's always romantic relationships in them, but I like it when the romance part is a side note and not the main event. Uh, Dreamland by Nicholas Sparks. I know I just got through saying I'm not a romance person, but if I am going to read one, Nicholas Sparks is kind of my guilty pleasure. I actually do very much enjoy his books. Okay, here was the other Khaled Hosseini book, and I don't remember finishing this one, to be honest with you. I know I didn't enjoy it or get into it as much as the other two. I guess I must have finished it because I put it as complete, and I, if I don't finish a book, I will either, if I don't like it, I will put it in my did not finish category, or I will mark it, I will go from read or currently reading back to want to read and then pick it back up later. Memphis by Tara Stringfellow. So this is a very honest and truthful fiction and I enjoyed reading it a lot. It was again very eye-opening, very insightful. It was a fictional story but I guess you could kind of say that it is a historical fiction perhaps because it is a fictional story that is also very very truthful in that it is based on events that happen in the lives of poor black folks living in Memphis every single day and you know it it did start back in I can't remember for sure if it was 60s 80s it wasn't current day it was a while back um but very very eye-opening of the black experience and I feel like reading books like this even though it is fiction being able to experience the story through the eyes of someone who has experienced it themselves it really causes us to stop and think and gives us a very important and much needed perspective shift. And I appreciate books that do that. And that is why this one received five stars for me. The Huntress by Kate Quinn. I couldn't possibly recommend anything by Kate Quinn anymore. Fantastic writer. The Huntress, this is also a World War II one. And so for this one, um, let's see, cause I read two of them. Okay, yes, this was the one where there was a woman that was on the side of the Nazis that hunted people down and murdered them. And then towards the end of the book, she escaped and she changed her name and her identity and moved to the United States and people eventually found her and took care of her. So, um, Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult. It was okay. Um, I really love Jodi Picoult and most of her books are fantastic. This one was, I mean, it was... Definitely one of those kind of a controversial topic right now about a trans person. Um, but the book itself, the subject matter was fine. I think the writing wasn't her strongest. And part of it, she did write it with another person. And so she would do a chapter and the other person would do a chapter. Um, they wrote, it was, so each chapter was like the perspective of a different person. And one author wrote one person's perspective and the other author wrote the other ones. And I think that might be why it fell a little flat for me. It just wasn't as attention getting as Jodi Picoult's books usually are. <clears throat> and then Woman on Fire by Lisa Barr. I, if I remember correctly, I think this one was also historical fiction set in Nazi Germany and it revolved around the theft of art and the main story was kind of recovering a specific piece of stolen art. And then The Three Sisters by Heather Morris. I actually did end up finding this one at the library book sale and I purchased it. And this whole series I will most definitely get if I can find them all. It is part of the Tattooist of Auschwitz series. And this one is the final book and it's where they are able to escape to Israel and start their lives over. And it's another fantastic read. Demon Copperhead is definitely up there among my favorite books of 2023. It's also an historical fiction and it covers a lot of very important topics in 
Appalachia specifically, I mean, poverty, um, of course, but more important than poverty is drug use and addiction because it just really took hold in that area. That was kind of the start of the epidemic that we now see kind of nationwide. But this book, it was such a fantastic, fantastic job. Well done by Barbara Kingsolver. Verity by Colleen Hoover, that was another one that was a popular book that wasn't necessarily my normal genre, and that is why I hesitated giving it a rating. I honestly don't remember what it was about, and Miss Emily is about to get <laughs> in the frame, um, but I read it. It didn't leave much of an impression because I couldn't tell you what it was about, so moving on. Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. This one... It was so good. And again, thanks, Emily. <laughs> again, I hesitated to give this one a rating. If I had to give it a rating, it would absolutely be five stars. However, because of the subject matter, because of the fact that I did not have any experience with addiction at all, um, no idea what it was like for him, I don't feel like I am justified in giving this a rating. Who am I to say whether his experience in his life was five star, one star, or anything in between. It's not up to me, but it was a fantastic book. And if you love Matthew Perry, if you love Chandler, Chandler Bing, then definitely give this a read. And it will bring a lot of insight into kind of, you know, he just passed away at the end of this year. And it will bring a lot of insight into what happened there. <clears throat> All right. The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. I think that one also I'm going to bump down to three. It was a good book, but it was average. Um, and it's another kind of historical fiction. I don't even know if historical fiction is necessarily right. I guess so, because it does kind of start back in time. But it is. Um, it takes place in India. And then, of course, Spare by Prince Harry. This was another one where I felt that I didn't have the right to give it a rating because who am I to judge another person's experience? But I did enjoy reading the book and learning a little bit about kind of what's going on behind the scenes. I know there were definitely times where I felt, yes, they are definitely wealthy people who have never experienced normal human life and are out of touch with things. And some of it definitely felt a little bit exaggerated and... I don't know that it's necessarily made up, but I think that perhaps some of his perspectives might not have been very thoughtful of other people's perspectives. It was definitely a one-sided telling. For the most part, I enjoyed it, but there were definitely some moments throughout it where I was like, mm, I don't know. Okay, the first of the ridiculous books and the reason why I almost didn't make my reading goal for 2023, because I started Edward Rutherford. And I do believe I did three of his books this year and they are obnoxiously long. They're anywhere between about 35 and 50 hours long if you do the audiobook, which I did because they're that long. Um, very good. They are very good books because they are historical fiction, but they go all the way back to the beginning of things and come all the way up to modern times. And it starts with a family or an individual and it kind of follows like their bloodline. And so it stays kind of consistent with that family or that person throughout the books, but it is a very, very long retelling of history. I learned a lot from his books, but they are very long. And because they are very long, each one that I read, I could have read four or five regular books in the same amount of time. And that is kind of what set me behind for a little while. But I definitely recommend him. Um, funny enough, he was actually recommended to me by my old dentist, who I found out on the very last day as he was retiring that um, he... so. Obviously, he was a dentist, but he was a literature minor in college, and so we had lots and lots to talk about on that last day. Um, this one, I it was just kind of a little fun read. There's a lot of pictures and things in it, and it's kind of one of those things about how to get that warm and inviting space in your home. I enjoyed reading it. I got a few little ideas. <clears throat> The First Ladies, this was a good book. I enjoyed reading it. Eleanor Roosevelt is my favorite First Lady. I appreciate her a lot, and this was specifically a story about her and another black woman whose name I forget. Let me see who was she, because I had never heard of her before this. Oh, Mary, Mc Mary McLeod Bethune? Or McLeod. I believe it's McLeod Bethune. Um, but she was an important figure of the civil rights movement that does not ever... I had never heard of her before I read this book. So um, very much enjoyed reading that one as well. And then another Edward Rutherford. This one is called Sarum, which is what... Uh, is it Salisbury, England? I 
one of the S cities in England. I can't, I feel like it was Salisbury, but anyway, that was its original name and that was kind of where things started and it starts all the way back, I believe it was like 10,000 years BC, um, at the very start of things in England and all the way up through modern day. So it was also a very, very good, interesting read. And I learned a lot about the religious wars and things too that I had never learned before. And then this one, it was about the Holocaust and I don't remember it very well. It was a very, very, very short book. Um, I didn't even give it a rating, so I, I can't speak much on it because I don't really remember it. Um, the Ways of White Folks by Langston Hughes was another great read if you're interested in African American history. It was also another perspective shifter. Very much enjoyed reading that one. The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kaddish is a historical fiction written from the Jewish perspective. It was another really great book. I definitely recommend it. Um, Dracula by Bram Stoker was another one of my favorite reads of the entire year. I can't believe that I waited this long to read it, but great, great book. It's so disappointing that there's not a movie or a series that follows the story exactly. Uh, the Candy House, I, it, I believe this one, I, hmm, to be honest, I know I didn't finish this one. I probably should have put this on my did not finish, um, pile, but I got about halfway through it and it was just... It would jump from one person's story to a completely different person's story to a completely different person's story, and none of them were connected or related, and I was having a hard time keeping up with it, and I was like, you know, I'm just not into this. I'm, I'm done. I'm moving on. Uh, Frankenstein was another one that I did enjoy the book. It was not as good as Dracula, but it was, it was good. I liked it. It was really, really cool to see some great writing from a female author from 1818, because there weren't many female authors back then, and the ones that were around, if they wanted to be taken seriously, they had to use male pen names, and so I very much enjoyed reading some good writing by a very fantastic female author. Okay, Tiny Beautiful Things, it was by Cheryl Strayed. I didn't give it a rating because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I read Wild and I thought it was going to be more of her story, but it wasn't. It was her, basically, advice columns, just a bunch of different stories from that. So some of them were definitely interesting and I enjoyed the book overall, I think, but it wasn't what I expected it to be. Um, the Daughter of Auschwitz, another fantastic read, and she is actually still alive, and she has a TikTok account that her, I believe it's grandson, helps her run, so you can check her out on there as well, which is really, really cool, because there aren't a whole lot of survivors left anymore, but she's still around. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This one earned the number six spot on my dresser in my bedroom, so... I had a top five and now I have a top six and this one just barely slid its way in. Um, give it a read if you have any interest at all in women's history, women's rights, you will appreciate it. The Picture of Dorian Gray, I finally got around to reading this year and Emily is working on coming back. <laughs> um, definitely liked this book. I know it is a lot of people's favorite classic literature. It wasn't my favorite. I did like it. I did enjoy it but there's no way that it was going to knock Jane Eyre out of first place. Not at all. Not even going to come close. And then after that, A Christmas Carol, because I was trying to stay kind of seasonal, and I'd, I'd seen the play. I've even seen it live at the Fox Theater, you know, many times, seen movies, and um, but I'd never actually read it, so I decided to give that a read, and I did like it. It was a very quick read, too. The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. I did not actually read it. I listened to it on Spotify because it is a play, and I enjoy plays a lot more when you actually hear them or like see them acted out, and I did this one right before we went to the River Campus and actually watched the play. The Old Man in the Sea, my very first Hemingway, believe it or not. I've had some of his books on my bookshelves forever, it feels like, and I've never actually read one. But I did have a little bit of a break in there between having library checkouts, and so I read some of the books off my own bookshelf, and this was one of them. Um, everything's fine. I don't even remember what it was about. I gave it two stars, so apparently I didn't love it. Oh, wait, I do remember what this one was about. And the reason I gave it two stars, so it was from the perspective of a black woman, she was the main character, and I expected a lot from that. And I was kind of disappointed because in the end, she let a white man change who she was, kind of get into her head and make her doubt herself. I it just, to me, I felt like the book had a lot of potential and it did not go in the right direction and I didn't like it. 
Um, Necessary Illusions by Noam Chomsky. Um, this one I also did, I couldn't find the book anywhere to actually read it, so I found, I believe it was on YouTube where I finally found like the audio version of it, and so I did this one, and it was actually a um, lecture that he gave, and they turned it into a book, and it was very much worth the read. Um, if you have any interest in politics whatsoever, it covers a lot of those kinds of things. And then finally, um, Killing the Witches, The Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. And honestly, I haven't rated it yet, but I'm going to give it a two. And the reason I'm going to give it a two is because it was weird. Like the first 40% of the book probably was actually about the Salem Witch Trials. And it was a lot of interesting information. And I really enjoyed learning all of the things that I did. It was kind of cool to get like a full chronological order of how things happened, except it wasn't chronological. It jumped back and forth a lot. But then it turned into a thing about founding fathers and the revolution. And I was like, where? Like, it completely left field. I don't know where it even connected. It didn't connect the two of those. I, I don't know where he was going with that. But that was like the next 50% of the book. And then the last 10% was about the exorcist and the child involved in that and his story. Again, interesting information to learn, especially if you've ever seen the movie The Exorcist but it had absolutely nothing to do with witches. And so I was very confused to read a book about the Salem witch trials and only 40% of it actually be about that subject matter. So I would recommend it, but I would just stop after that first 40% of the book and turn it back in. But anyhow, that was the final book of 2023. And tomorrow you will get a video about 12 of the books that I have in store for 2024, three of which I have right here and have already started and just need to finish and then nine new ones. So sorry, this was long. I know I was going to keep them 10 minutes, but it's hard to cover 46 books in 10 minutes. So um, thank you for watching if you've made it this far and happy eighth day of Christmas.